four, three, two. Yes, Bill Burr. How what? are you, fella? <laughs> What's going Good on? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you very much for taking me up on that flight. I'm going to tell you what. No, legitimately, you changed <laughs> the way I think about L.A. It's I really think, small, isn't it? It's way smaller than you think. Yeah. It's a different thing. When you fly over it, you go, oh, this ain't that big. Yeah, that's here. This is there. Because what it is, I remember when um, I was still getting my license and I was doing a night flight, right? Um, which is insane. Totally different ball game. Oh, I imagine. And uh, yeah, because when you're on the ground, you're like, wow, it'd be really easy to see everybody because you're looking up and all you're seeing is the backdrop is of the dark sky, right? Right. But when you get up there, if someone's below you, they disappear into the city. Uh. So that's what, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, so we were flying back and I trained down in Long Beach. So we were going along the 710 and I just see like all these these lights and it was like right there. I'm like going up like, and I go, what's that? He goes... And the, guy, the uh, pilot looked over. He goes, "Oh, that's the uh, that's the fireworks from Disneyland." And I was like, "Fucking Disneyland is right there!" Because in my <laughs> head, it took like two hours to get there, hour and a half, yeah, going down the five. But it's just like because you don't look at miles. All right. you do is look at time when you're out here because there's so much traffic. But it's literally like, oh, that's like forty miles. It's not even. It's like from Hollywood. Like I, I would think it, it can't even be more than fifteen, twenty miles away. Like yeah. Anaheim, Anaheim is so fucking close, but I just, it's just Ir like Irvine Comedy Club. That's all I think of. It's just fucking way the fuck down there. And then you, you get up in a helicopter and you're like there in like 11 minutes going like, this is, this is ridiculous. So, um, yeah, yeah. So it that's was awesome. You, Dude, it was awesome. Yeah, it Flying was. Flying over um, Malibu when you landed on the top of that little hill there with the next, picnic table. Yeah. Dude. That was that funny. Was I set it down cool. nice. I was a little nervous. Set I'm like, all right, don't smooth. don't fuck this up with Joe here because he's gonna be like, yeah, bro, you know, he was all right when he was flying. When he went, to, when he, the big part when he went to land, he wasn't that good. But no, um, it was smooth. And then the apocalypse now shit. We're going through the canyons. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that was awesome, man. Yeah, those are. I get, um, it. I get it. Those are fun. That's it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know, I, I fly mostly with an instructor because I got the kid and everything. But every once in a while, you got to go out by yourself just so you know you can do it. But um, I also, um, I'm actually over to, overdue to do it, but I always go out and I do like the auto rotations and he'll just sort of chop, I'm flying along, he'll just chop throttle and like, it's just, it's just rolling the RPMs. I mean, rolling the engine down, not the RPMs, the engine down. And then you immediately have to pick a spot, you know? And sometimes, you know, the lower you are, you know, it becomes literally what you, the first place you look is where you're putting it. It's really crazy, but, um, or where yeah, you but would, where explain you would to people it. what you're talking about. You mean crash landing. That's what auto rotation means. Yeah, it'd be basically if you had some sort of uh, failure problem, yeah, engine failure, or whatever. So, like when you're flying along and the engine's working, it's drawing air into the disc, and that's what creates lift. But when uh, when you go into an auto rotation, um, it's it's the air rushing. You're using gravity, bringing the uh, the helicopter down, using that air like almost like a fan to keep it going. Uh. So, and there's a critical point where if you let the main rotor go too slow that's why the low rpm horn comes on which is just a nauseating sound uh if you let it go too low that when if it gets to a point where if it's spinning too slowly no matter how fast you drop you can't get it going again oh. fast enough to create and you're basically at that point you're in something that's no longer able to fly your so, uh your instructor skyler is that was yeah name? skyler yeah. uh pointed out something that i didn't know that they have to redo those things like every X amount of miles. They rebuild everything. Hours, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, well, they have like there's all this maintenance along the way. They're incredibly maintained because I'm, I'm sure you noticed if you read the comments, all people talk about is dying in aviation. It's like yeah. you're like, oh, that's how entertainers die. It's like no, it isn't. They overdose. If you really looked at the <laughs> graph, they're on the ground, completely safe. <laughs> overdose, car accidents. It's just almost always overdose. Drinking, right? yeah, yeah, and shit like that. And it's just like that's mainly how you die like yeah. the amount of people that are up there every day and there nothing happens it's it's you know but there is the you know the the fly in the ointment is that there's there are particularly at the private level there are knuckleheads out there like there's people like i think every time i get in i'm always thinking like am i gonna you know i don't want to die today so I, I i go over all a, a whole bunch of shit and you know, especially if I'm going to fly solo, I'm, I'm, I have the whole flight. I have all my options on you know where I could land 
you know, if I had a problem, like that's what you're supposed to do. I look at weather reports. I do all of that shit. And what happens is guys get more and more confident and their pre-flight is they, they kind of look, oh, it looks pretty clear. And then they go out there and, uh, you know, this, you know, this, this. There's people who go up knowing that they can die, and then there's other people up there who just like Magnum PI and they want to fly by waterfalls and shit. I mean, those guys have more fun, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's you know, there's definitely um, those are the people that you know you're supposed to fly. There's like two envelopes. You're supposed to fly within the envelope of what you're flying, and then you know your skill set. So you don't fly into shit. This is like you know like. If the if it's too windy or whatever, I'm just like I'm, just, I'm not going. Right. Even if I could handle it, it's like I'm not gonna have fun up there, fucking you know, riding it out and just you know, let the wind do what it wants to do and don't fight it and you know, make sure you know, you're not flying too fast. All you do is slow down, you know. Um, but you know, it's it's there, there there are elements of that. But like if you look up there versus what's going on down below. When you fly, I always say this, when you drive on the highway, it's like you're flying in formation. You're in the Blue Angels yeah. with a bun- with nobody talking to anybody. You have no idea what anybody's going to do. People are texting. They're on medication. They're yep. fucking hungover. They're suicidal. You know what the fuck they're doing, you know? And then on top of that, you got to look out for the guy splitting lanes on the motorcycles and shit. Um, it's pretty amazing how few accidents there actually are. There, if you think it is. About it. it is. And when I fly the Robinsons, they get a bad rap saying they're not safe because they look at the amount of crashes that they've had, but it, it's be, it's because it's a helicopter you can afford, so it's inherently a low hour uh, pilot. And if you look at it, it's most of the time it's not it's not the the helicopter; it's the it's the person flying it, um, which is why you really have to be on it. Like you 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 can't. Um, it's it's just not something. Uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's this weird thing where you, your your level of enjoyment is way higher if you're if you're riding in it. You know what I mean? If you're the person uh, flying the whole time, you have your life and other people's lives at hand so that you're not really like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Like, I'm also like, you know, thinking things of like, you know, when we were flying through that canyon and you're you, da, 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 thinking that shit, I'm looking, you know, knowing where the wires are and where the road is because that's all fucking trees. So it's going to be the road. So there's those, you know, when you're kind of going around a bend, you know, it, there's certain like altitudes and stuff. Just... It's it's boring, but it's just stuff that you're you're always thinking that, um, you know. I imagine like when you fight, there's that you know. I know a lot of it's like instinct and stuff, but there's these things that you just don't do. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know anything about fighting. But I was heard in boxing, you don't lead with an uppercut. There's just there's just fucking things mm-hmm. you don't. You see a lot of guys like when they go to take off, they do this fucking thing, like the nose down uh, attitude. Yeah. Like I was taught not to do that. Cause why it, do they do that? Because it looks cool. I don't know why they do it. I mean, you're supposed to, like I was taught, you're supposed to keep it level. So that way, if you have a problem, you know, you, you're already in the right attitude to just immediately enter, enter an auto. Like now, if I'm, if I'm fucking nose down and if I'm too far to the ground, I'm just going to fucking go right into the ground. Um, I don't know. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm still like totally a novice. I'm, I'm coming up on 200 hours. So I don't know a lot, but I'm super, 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 super fucking cautious and uh i i make sure i don't go too long without doing auto rotations i used to hate them and now i actually really like them um it was sort of the way it was explained to me i didn't get it until one day i just thought about it and then i got it and i was able to lock into it because it's it's the same inputs if you were going in for a landing Mm -hmm. but they broke it down to like four steps like it was low rpm you know lower collective gentle aft cyclic you know, uh, look at your trim strings, you know, air, yeah, was it trim, st- trim, airspeed, RPMs, and just fucking doing all of this. And the reality is, is just like, it's the on right pedal. Jesus Christ, I forgot that, right pedal. So it's all the same, <laughs> it's all the same input if you were going in for a landing. So all I do anytime I hear the low RPM is I just do that, and then I'm locked into it. And then I'm just watching my, then I can just watch my RPMs. And at this point, I've flown enough where I, I kind of know where I'm, I'm in trim, which basically means you're not like crabbing in, you're kind of going straight. And then you can kind of like pick out your spot. And then it becomes fun. Is what's cool is you can do like 180 autos, you can turn around. And what I do like about it is when you come down to the ground, is you can bleed off all of your airspeed, that forward motion that's going to fucking kill you. And as long as you don't fuck up and flare and go back up and then drop like a, you know, you know, it's kind of like a hockey stop is the way it was described to me. You just level it out and right as you go to drop, you pull like that. And these guys land them like daisies and stuff. It's it's really amazing. I'm not as good as that, but like I, I will do it where, you know, worst case scenario, you know, I might well, like, ah, fuck. Like, 
<laughs> get a little bit of a bump. Yeah, but I'm going to be all right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Now there's probably a bunch of people saying, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, which admittedly, you know, I still think I, there's a lot of shit I need to learn about stand up. So as long as you go into things like that, um, you know. Well, the, th the fact that you're doing it and the fact that you're learning a new thing that's really difficult to learn, don't you think that that's good for your brain? No, I am a big believer in constantly learning. It's why I like you as a person because you're constantly like you're not the Joe I knew three years ago in a good way. You're like you, you learn all of this. You know, when I first met you, you weren't hunting. Uh, you were into martial. That was the thing. You you were, you were two dimensional. You were, which was amazing because everyone was just a comedian. You were this taekwondo champion, uh, stand up guy, and then and then since then you've added all like the guests that you have on and the fact that you're able to like talk to them and stuff is because you've continued to, you know, um, you know it's it's the same thing with like like a comic who writes his first hour and then just sits on it for like eight years. Yeah, and all of a sudden two presidents goes by and it's like why aren't they laughing anymore? It's like because you're just stuck in time. So um, I, 